Good afternoon, Brian with Grand Riffing. We're gonna do a quick two shingle repair for you guys because you wanna see the how-to. The last few I did were hours long. We're gonna shoot this one real quick. First off, what we got is a two shingle slid out off this roof blown out. They're still up here, we're gonna use them. This is not paying, this is a freebie to help these people out. They contact me for an estimate. I've been here years back and yes, it is a discontinued shingle. We're not gonna go the insurance route. I already talked to them about that. This isn't the insurance route. For all you guys that say, oh, I could have got a bot. Yeah, proud. Okay, I've done that too. Very transparent with the homeowners and they don't want to go that route. This is for you DIYers that want to know how to do this. Oh, so we're going to get into that. Basic necessities is a hammer or a AJC mag hatchet. Awesome for you roofers out there, repair guys, the handymans. This is amazing. You don't necessarily need a tool belt if you're a DIYer homeowner, but you are going to need something if it is a little pitchier like this. Just a standard couch cushion, or in this case, it's an old memory phone pad. And what that's for is to sit on safely, or cougar paw pads. They have basically the same thing. It's a replaceable pad that can rip out. I can walk a steep 12-12 roof. Don't do things I do because it's unsafe. Take your own safety in your own hands. This is just a general basic overview. I do this every day. Yes, the accidents do happen, but a cushion like that can really help you. I mean, it grips the roof really good because all the little porous little areas here, it grips the granules and it distributes your weight. So you can sit up on a roof like this, no problem, and you can work on it. You can also use hook ladders and you come up and hook a hook. In this case, there is no hook. All right, let's get into it. You're here for the how-to. I didn't see this one from the ground, but it slid down. We're gonna just tack these off here, that there. The one that came out, it appears that it came out due to the fact of probably just blown through a little too deep. It tore out of those, so hot day, just kind of slid out. This has been up here for probably 25, 24, 23 years, I think it was. In 2001, they said it was built, and it's 2024 now. So, hand nails, something to fasten it with. I'm gonna use a little bit of a sealer to seal it down so it sticks good which I use the GSL brand 4500 roof sealant. And I'll tag a few of these items down in the description down below for you guys. Let me get the GoPro on and we'll go. Oh, you know what? I forgot my flat bar. It's in the truck. Um, basically split the seal strips here, pop out the nails that are in there and uh, put the new ones back. I typically carry a cat's claw. So let's see if it's in here. Probably buried on my left side. It's always in my pouch for removing decking nails, things like that. We're just gonna use that on this little bitty two shingle repair. It's a cat's claw. I use that for pulling decking nails. Let me get the GoPro on and we'll get into this. Make it a shorter video. It's a little chilly out today. We had frost on the roofs. Uh, it's supposed to be in the 40s this week, so we're not really getting back to the installs yet. We only did a couple over last week, two weeks, because it was warmer. Let's just get this in the tub, get it out of there. And now we're going to get the nails. So you're just going to do your best to look up under here. Any nails, get them popped out. A flat bar is much better than a cat's claw because you can get under farther. But for two shingles, I could probably do this quicker than going down off the roof back to my truck to get a flat bar. I just had too much in my hands and the ladder getting over here to set up. Plus I was like, you know what? Let's just grab the GoPro real quick. We'll do this video for you guys. This is a north slope. So it never sees that much sun, especially when it's pitchy like this. So a lot of the sun hits the other sides of the house, even the east and the west facets. North slope, still would get sun but as you go up steep like that you see what just happened with that shadow appearing right there because the sun technically never really gets straight overhead in my region here i don't even know what we are north degrees uh from the equator but uh it will get a little somewhat overhead just not like it is right now in the winter so north slopes you really want to make sure they're in good as far as where the nail pattern goes not blown through that was pulled out and it's really chilly so these are a little rigid nails during install are high some guys during a uh, repair like this they just throw new shingles in they don't uh, don't go through this but this process of removing nails if they don't over time they will just break through the next shingle on a hot summer day so it's really important that you 
take a few minutes to do this right so they do last. All right, so this nail right here, if I can get up in here close enough, right there, my opinion, one, it's too high because it should have caught the underlying headlap. Let me take GoPro off. Make sure I can get it in frame. So that nail there, during the regular install, should have been lower down. You should always catch the headlap of the shingle under it. So that's a dead giveaway, it's way too high. Furthermore, you can kind of see it's like damn near to the roof deck. It's blown through. They probably had their, their gauge set way too high. See this one here? See the different angles from looking out and above? You can tell their depth is way too high during the install. Either it was really hot um, or it was cold and it was fractured, but their depth, their piston is pushing way too far down into the shingle. That's why ultimately this is happening. And you mix that in with the shingles, the nails being a little on the higher side. All right, let's get back uh, GoPro on the head and keep this uh, going. I'll try to do this in like 10 or 15 minutes. Uncut, unedited for you. Sorry for that. Okay, we're good. All right, out and ready, out and ready. Those are nailed down too far deep, they're not an issue. The uh, Cougar Paws, I was able to get these years back on Amazon, but due to the safety hazard of them, people were saying the links I had were gone. So I don't know if the seller I had had on there had to quit selling on Amazon due to liability or just Amazon itself said it was too too dangerous. I don't know. You, uh, I'll, If I can see a new updated link, I'll do that. But if not, you're going to have to check your roofing supply places. So depending on where you're at, ABC Supply Co., Reese Wholesale, SRS, North Coast Distribution, various uh, places. You're not going to find it at your Lowe's, your Home Depot. You're going to need to go online. And those are Cougar Paws, so they're really sweet. We're gonna re-nail a few of these where they're broken. And I'm gonna catch this double laminate right here. This is still a three tab, so you can't just nail it wherever because you're gonna be in the keyway of the next shingle there. That one's definitely broke free. The uh, brittle test, some people are like, oh, it's a joke, you know. Uh, you just got to be careful when you're folding these up. Obviously, when it's warmer, it's going to be a whole lot easier. Now, the trick is this row, because it's pinned down. Right now, that's not pinned. I can lift this a little bit more. And again, they're planning on getting the roof down. They're wanting estimates. We're just trying to patch this back. Again, I'm not even charging for this. This is just kind of a, a good faith thing. I gave my opinion a few years back. They had no roof damage. I told them you can get some more years out of it. That was four years ago. Okay. This is where the mag hatchet's awesome. Most magnetic hammers, it's gonna be a little raised piece here where it holds a nail, like a framing nail or something. It's not a true magnetic where it's like an embedded neodymium magnet in there, so it's very powerful. And it holds it really good so you can strike while you are holding up something. And it just makes it a whole lot easier. Again, you can do all the same stuff with standard. Now here, I'm going to snap the seal strip between those so it can roll a little bit. I will reseal them. But as cold as these are, they're not very flexible. There's another double laminate tab right there that's not near the keyway, so we're gonna go ahead and tack one in on the edge of that. Now for a lot of you like, oh, I can't believe you're doing that for free. Well, you'd be surprised at how much little stuff like this can really buy you some good trust and good faith with clients. And we'll use you and recommend you and just be good advocates to you. There's a lot of things I'll do. 
free or heavily discounted. Another thing I do is really help out the military veterans in the area. So it's not all about the money per se. If you quit looking at when you're, and this applies for like contractors, people, salesmen. If you quit looking at things like, oh, I gotta make money now, or so much money per hour or something, you're looking at it all wrong. If you look at just bringing a good quality value, uh, good service, something somebody can trust, the money will follow. And it takes a while to get your head in the psychology right, because they don't teach you that stuff in school. I know a lot of people, you just, they look at it like, oh, I gotta make so much money, or I'm not even gonna do the job, or I uh, gotta make so much money for repair, I'm not doing something for free, and just, it doesn't, it, it, I guess it's harder for them to build a brand, I feel. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong, that's just my opinion. All right, I usually double check, make sure I got everything, and then we're gonna nail that top row off. Memory foam, probably not the best because it's squishing and it doesn't rise up as quick as a standard cushion would. Those are good. And then everything I do repair-wise, it always gets sealed down. Especially this time of year because it's not going to stick and on a north slope. A lot of times I'll see repair work from somebody prior to me going out. It's three tab especially. They will do the repair. Well, sometimes they just cut and tuck it under really half-assing it. And then other times they'll actually do the repair, but they'll forget to seal the shingles above that they split. And then that one flips and breaks. And actually, I just had somebody comment on a video. I didn't reply yet. He asked if uh, if I do a repair, do I rip some loose in another area so it leads to more work? No, hell no, never would ever I even consider doing that. That would just be bad. This one's broke too. It is a repair, so I gotta stop at some point. Otherwise you could just be like, well, I gotta nail off the whole section, you know? So, but what I'm putting in, I want to stick down. loose it's a double bond keyway where to go right here yeah let's try to get up well, look here during the install and that nail is actually in the keyway so much that it kind of broke through the shingle and the other one it's too deep and breaking through we're gonna nail those off and then I believe got those Put this row in. Yeah, gotta nail that row right there, and then we'll be ready. 14 minutes, we're gonna boss that shoot. I'm trying to keep this under 15 minutes. This is the last one. All right, so as far as sticking it down, if you're using brand new shingles, they will eventually stick, provided you got enough sun on it and temperature. But if not, I mean, still any repair I ever do, it gets a couple dabs of sealer. I'm not putting a solid line. I'm usually doing two or three dabs. And if you're gonna dab it, a couple things, basics on where you're sealing, you're never gonna seal a keyway and you usually wanna put a sealer where your nail is. So I'm doing like a small dab here and a dab here and there. Sometimes I'll do here and here. Either way, you don't draw a line across, especially if it's dimensional, because water gets in that keyway, you don't want to trap it, run it laterally. And if you put it over a nail, it's going to stick the shingle down where your nail is. 
So that's just some of the basics on uh, sealing stuff down. And then if you got a broken dimensional piece like this, just a little dab under that, it'll re-stick. And that's because the radius, you're bending a double laminate, they're gonna sometimes pop up. That was just one seal broke. Let's just goop it out now. down better all right so I got everything I did I got the two shingles that I put in and then the rows above it where the seal strips were broke free after a few hours that GSL 4500 will start setting and tacking up so it won't slide out blow out be loose when catching that's primarily why so if I can show you here if this tab comes out you're gonna split this split this split that take those nails out these nails out pop this tab out put the new one in if this is a top seal which most three tabs are these corners will stick this corner will not, and this will not. A lot of guys don't do that. What happens over time, this blows in the wind, creases, flies off. All right, Let's see where we're at here. 18 minutes, not too bad. I did a little talking here, try to point out a few more things. My battery's about to go dead. If you guys could give it a thumbs up, if you like this kind of content, I'll try to do more of it, of repair work like this. I did a couple last week, but they were probably four to seven hour repairs and I've got a lot of editing to do. It takes a lot to edit. So if you guys could give it a thumbs up, let me know where you're watching from, what you like about the channel. And as always, until next time, be safe and we'll see you on the next video.